you. Thank you so much for being here tonight. This is the fourth meeting of the Bond Task Force planning. Uh, we are so glad to have you here. With that being said, we do have a quorum of board members here, so I will call this meeting to order, and I will turn it over to you, Dr. Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mercer. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is our fourth meeting, our fourth and two weeks of the Bond Planning Task Force. Appreciate everyone continuing your service and joining us tonight. Our agenda for this evening will be to recap meeting three, re review draft options of two potential November 2021 VATRE slash bond proposals. We're going to go through an activity around those two drafts to think pair and share your thoughts on pros and cons of those two drafts and then we'll cover a calendar for community meetings and next steps moving forward from tonight i'm going to tell you that we haven't even started yet but i know how this ends <laughs> Now, for those of you who were here at the last meeting, you're probably thinking, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> what I mean by that is I know how this ends because it's going to start and end with me expressing gratitude to you. I want to describe a, a moment I had about halfway through our meeting last week. Some great discussion, diversity of thought. But there was a point in the small group discussions as I walked around and I saw how involved and passionate the group was that if you stand back from the crowd, it's, it's kind of awe-inspiring, honestly. It would be easy if everybody just agreed and it was one meeting and you're out. I'll admit that. But it was awe-inspiring to see what is democracy in action. And that's what we had here locally in these meetings. And it, it really hit me that night. But it was special the next morning because I touched base with one of our leadership team and I said, hey, tell me your thoughts about the meeting. And the first thing they said to me was, it was so cool to see what's been happening in our country for hundreds of years, people getting together and trying to solve complex problems. And there was a quote I thought of as I was driving into work this morning. You may have heard of it before. It's, called, it's about the man in the arena. And it talks about, you know, it'd be easy to step outside and not be a part of things and not jump into the dirt when things have to be done and tough decisions have to be made. But I want to compliment you, community members that are here, board members that are here, school district staff who've committed to being here for these evening meetings because you've thrown yourself in the arena when you didn't have to. For the district, didn't have to pursue trying to improve facilities and improve pay. Could have taken an easier route and just not done anything, I suppose. Community members, you're not getting paid to be here. Out of the kindness of your hearts, you're here to help try to make us better. And so each of you has thrown yourself into the arena. And for that, I have profound gratitude. Yes, sir. Yeah, as a community task force, I had some thoughts as we've been going through the, through the, the group discussion and then in the presentation that's been given. Some of the information that you, you, you kind of need is going to be brought up probably during the election. One of them is, I hope that we can answer tonight, that 11 cents that was taxed right after the Harvey, what happened to it? Was it spent? Was it not spent? Was it put into surplus? How was it spent? The reason that's brought up is all of a sudden we have money to fix the, the facility over on the fourth floor of Stoneman and it, could, it wasn't used before, but now we have the money. So we want to know how that, well, how that the fund balance increased $12 million in one year in 2019. We, we as, I think, as a community, we're kind of an idea. We don't want any new taxes as we're going forward in the bond proposal. I think it's very important because they told us in, in May no to even a seven and a half cent tax. We, but we all agree that we need more money for our successful seasoned teachers. We need more money for our maintenance staff and their, their seasoned staff members because they need, we need them to 
keep our facility fixed up so we don't come back to this problem ever again. And finally, we need to know, is there some plan that the maintenance department has to fix our facilities and keep it fixed years into the future? And if they will have enough money and enough staff to be able to do that. So that we're never called upon to spend bond money again on our facilities. Those are a bunch of questions, but thank, hopefully during the meeting that can be answered. Thank you very much. I don't mean to interrupt you. Well, I, I will tell you that part of the information shared will address a portion of what you brought forward. Uh, certainly, anytime we provide information to our public and our group, we want to make sure it's accurate information. So there's part of what you brought forward that we're not prepared to address tonight in the level of detail that I think it would deserve. But we will address the things that are relevant to what the work of the task force has been up to this point in time. And we can continue that conversation forward. I, I would ask, as a task force facilitator, that if you have thoughts as we leave one meeting and come into a next, that if, if you, you have information you hope is addressed, that you please share that with me in advance when you can, because we'll always want to be giving our best effort to be responsible as quickly, <coughs> as responsive as quickly as possible to those requests. And it's really helpful if you're able to reach out to me in advance if you know you have those questions. So meeting three recap, titled this, What We Heard When Verifying Levels of Consensus. So this is me sharing back after visiting with our leadership team, reviewing the, the meeting, what we heard. On the far left side, you'll see potential VATRE. What we heard was consensus among the group to pursue a VATRE. Under priority repairs, what we heard from the group was a consensus to pursue a bond for some amount of repairs. What we also heard from the group was consensus to not include playgrounds in a potential November bond. What we also heard from the group was a broad spectrum of ideas and approaches to addressing the identified facility needs at Mission Valley Elementary. We heard everything from the school is 84 years old and we should build a new school with construction similar to that of our other elementary schools. We heard the school in a portion is able to be renovated and we think it should be renovated and added on to get rid of portable buildings we heard that we should consider uh, other types of construction modular construction was mentioned to reduce costs associated with additions or building of the campus what we did not hear was any form of consensus around an approach to Mission Valley up to this point. When we went to Stroman to discuss Stroman, what we heard was what I'll call an even broader spectrum of responses without consensus among the task force that ranged from <coughs> doing only the minimum level of repairs required to keep the building functioning right now because there's a, a perception that the community would not support a full-blown replacement of new construction. We heard take it down to the walls and renovate it, but maintain the, the foundation of the building, maintain some of the buildings and build some new construction. We heard, why don't we close the campus and send the kids to the other middle schools across the district? A very broad spectrum of thought processes there. I'm confident in saying there, there was no level of consensus around renovating or new construction for Stroman. <clears throat> 
So again, what we heard when verifying levels of consensus. We heard pursuing a VATRE and bond for priority repairs that address the most critical needs today with little to no impact to current tax rate. That there was consensus in that area. Again, including those two left side columns of VATRE and priority repairs. No consensus on playgrounds. Our consensus on playgrounds not to be included. No consensus, what I would describe as nowhere near consensus, on Mission Valley and Stroman. So you'll see noted above there, the possibility of a future task force process to further investigate options for Mission Valley and Stroman for some type of potential future bond. I can tell you now, some of the conversation that took place as we were discussing potential options around modifying the scope, renovating portions of the building, using modular construction to address a part of the building, those can all potentially continue to be conversations. The reality of planning and preparing for putting forward something to the community, we do not have the runway to do that accurately and effectively for a November bond. Not to say those are not concepts that could be considered, but there's a lot of work involved in doing that appropriately. And the November timeframe is simply not logistically possible. Well, uh, I think the consensus, I think we're a little off. The consensus was that we need, we need a new Mission Valley, but what can we get the voters to, to, to vote on? It wasn't, you know, there was just different ways of trying to get the voters to, to agree on something. Uh, so I don't, I don't think it was far off the path that we can't get, can't build a, a Mission Valley. It's all about you know, it's getting down to tax. I mean, we're talking about all these different things and listening to y'all tell me about the estimates that y'all don't have a design, don't have a building, don't have anything that's going off. So I don't remember the company's name, but you know, I don't believe that the consensus is that we don't, we're not, we don't want to build a new 84 year old school, you know, that has little to no expense after Harvey, uh, that, you know, was out there, you know. And, you know, I don't know in your figures if you're trying to build a new cafeteria and a new gym, which it doesn't need, it doesn't, doesn't warrant building new, that new stuff, and how you're gonna build it. Everybody's asking, <clears throat> the last bomb, people are, how are you gonna do this? If we do build this, what are you gonna do? Because we, we voted things in the past, and we're like, okay, they're gonna build a new hospital, how are they gonna, and they go and do it, and then it's like, well, what were they thinking? So they're wondering, how are you gonna build Mission Valley and not close the school down, can't build it in three months, can't knock it down in three months, you're gonna knock it down on a wing at a time, or you're gonna build it in the same location, what's it gonna do with the traffic? I mean, these are the questions that the voters are asking. And the biggest thing that I keep hearing is, we were over, we've been over taxing, is that? I mean, I don't, tell me that we're over taxing our VISD, and we're gonna use some of that money from the past. Is that, is that a true statement? Or? I, I, I want to kind of, you, you're going in a lot of different directions, Mr. Morris, and so I want to focus well, the conversation. Well, I, I, I tell you, I come here to work on a task force. We don't need to go back over everything we went over last time, and we do it every meeting, and then we adjourn, and we're in the heat of the moment of the deal, and we adjourn the meeting, and people come here. I could stay an extra hour. I mean, I could stay longer. It's just, we're come here to sacrifice our time to get something done for the education of the kids and the community, and, you know, just stop it and, you know, it, 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 it's gonna take some blood, sweat, and tears. Some people are gonna get their feelings hurt. Some people ain't gonna get their way. I'm used to that. I get it all the time. I, I, that's what I do. I mean, but we, we've got to move forward. We can't rehash the hash, or rehash the hash, the hash. And we can't keep, make, keep making the same mistakes that the, if you wanna say the school board are presenting what they've been presenting in the past uh, bonds. Because if we keep doing that, you ain't gonna get anywhere. Appreciate your comments. Um, it's important to me, as I stated last meeting, 
that when we have comments uh, and there are things that uh, the information is not complete or accurate, I want to make sure to address that. There was a statement made that the district uh, didn't work with design professionals to have accurate estimates. I think it's important to point out to the group as a whole that many community members, some in this room, some not, spent over a year and a half in the initial planning process, worked with respected design professionals, vetted that information, internally and externally with other respected design professionals, including architects and construction uh, companies who work primarily in the education sector. As a leadership team who wants to make sure that we have, that we don't bring anything to the public that isn't of value and isn't thoughtful about community resources, we would not bring those things forward. So I have not stated that. I have not asked um, our representative from Huckabee Architects to stand and defend the figures that we also vetted in other entities. But I've heard that stated multiple times and I think it's uh, inappropriate for me not to respond with information I know that's alternative to that. With that said, you do bring up, Mr. Morris, a question about what I'm presenting here in terms of, of some of our leadership team's reflections on the feedback we received last meeting. I think it would be very appropriate for us to open up what you just mentioned and, and ask the group, um, because certainly that's why we do this recap is to verify that we're not off track, that what we were thinking we were hearing was not off base. And so I, I, I invite the group and I invite feedback on whether or not we, we are at consensus around how to address mission value. I think we're at consensus as a group that something needs to be done at Mission Valley. I don't, I don't think anybody's debating that. What we aren't at consensus on is the scope of what that looks like. And I think this recap kind of involves what we discussed last time and presents the point that to get to consensus about what exactly needs to be done, uh, you put it as we don't have the runway at this point in, in the task force to hash out all of the specifics on what to present to the board to present to the public. Um, I think everybody in here has, has the same thought that something needs to be done. Can we come to a consensus in enough time to be able to present that for a November election? Uh, that, that, that's what I took from the recap. Thank you. Um, and, and I want to I make sure to, when we talk about time frames, that, that we clarify, and, and we talk about a November election, the reality is that the board would have to call an election in, in August, and so our, our runway is really between now and about the second week in August to, to know exactly what we're telling the public we'd be coming to them to ask for. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that kind of what got us in trouble last time, this time frame? I mean, you know, we, we were, some of us were crying, don't do it now, don't do it now, it's just type of COVID, people don't have jobs, we can't ask for more money. And, but it was like, no, 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 we, we've got to get this done, now we've got to see what the people want. And I'm just a little concerned about, I agree with you, there's a whole lot to be talked about and what we could do in Mission Valley that wouldn't cost a lot of money. I mean, my thought is we should go right away and uh, do staff, get the teachers paid more and give the maintenance people a lot more money so that they can get out there and get the job done and work hard and prepare. But I, I'm a little concerned, and maybe that's where you can enlighten me, aren't we getting ourselves in that same box again that we're gonna have to hurry? I mean, August, my gosh, that's just around the corner. And here we are sitting where we don't know. Can I just jump in? I, you know, I've purposely tried to stay out of it as much as possible because I know I have the ability to tip the scale pretty significantly. I think I'm hearing that everyone is basically in agreement. We're not saying we're going to rush the timeline on Mission Valley, and I think that's what Greg was trying to communicate. Is we're saying there is not consensus on Mission Valley at this time, and there isn't time, so we're not going to rush the process. But there are a few things we do have consensus on. 
your point, Brian, and to your point, Brian, you're right. There's a whole gamut of conversation that could take place. We could start from scratch if we wanted to. And certainly this leaves that option on the table to look at Mission Valley from the beginning. But what we're talking about is putting something forward if there's consensus in the room on a few items that can be supported by this group that we could take to the community to get feedback on. What we're not talking about is Mission Valley and Stroman. And we're not saying no forever. We're just saying right, right now. Right now, let's just take a time out on this conversation, focus on where we do have consensus, then come back. So my fear is, is if you, first, if we pass it, or if we propose a bond that has no tax increase, everyone is gonna go, wait a minute. How, where, what, what, what's going, where are you getting the money from? And then you gotta come up with, where did you get the money from? Somebody's gonna have to say where you got this money from, and it ain't all from the government. It's from taxpayers. They're gonna wanna know how did you get this money and how come we haven't been able to use it before? And if you pass that bond and you get that, or, or it's presented and this, they don't trust you on that one, you, you, you're gonna have an uphill battle trying to pass another bond a year or two years later for Mission Valley, Stroman, Crane, wherever it may be. And, and, I, I, I understand the timeline thing. I, I'm not saying just about Mission Valley. It's just that if you try to shove this down and you don't have nothing to go with it, because this is your best, this is your best thing you got. We're gonna get. Uh, 5:30. Uh, 5:30. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 You know, this is the best thing we have as far as our dessert for our meal. It, it, it's there. Everybody supports that. So if you take that away from the rest of the meal. You know, that's my concern. You take that one good thing, and I don't want to delay teacher pay increase. I, I mean, they deserve it. But if you take that away, I, it's going to make it even more difficult for them. I have a question as far as timing goes. <clears throat> Say we put, I'm looking at your thing up there, you do the first two things, um, and you propose that on this bond. What's the future timeline for another bond? And what is the district's leadership's ability, or are there, what is their thoughts on when that should occur? Whether it be school board or y'all's office? Undetermined at this point. Undetermined. It, it really, we want to give due diligence to the process. If we're genuinely starting starting over from scratch, that's a, that's a much longer process, right? If there's something that we can use from the previous work over the last year and a half to go off of, then we could do it a little bit quicker. So that's that's a, that's really a question for the tax, the next task. So maybe when we if we decide to do this first two steps, you tell people this is what we took from the last bond, and we are going to come back with something else to try to, to make it where the people will, will accept it. If that message is included in there, I think you're okay. If you wanted to do, if you just happen to do the first two steps. I think if we give Greg a chance to work through the presentation, you'll see that impact us over time. Okay. So perhaps I'll move forward and, and some of these questions may be answered and some new ones may be brought forward. So we're going to share with you two potential options for you to work through tonight, give us feedback on. Draft option one, a three cent MO tax increase for the VATRE, the Voter Approval Tax Rate Election, that that's the funding that would allow us to address pay competitiveness, retention of staff. Had broad consensus from my perspective throughout this process. Proposition B, as a part of this, is those priority repairs. You'll see a bond election of somewhere in the range of 37.6 million to 49.4 million. The reason you see a range, in our first meeting, beginning of last week, we shared that depending upon the work that's included, we have to then bet the, the amount of time that that cost can be financed. And so 
you'll see a the 15 year is that lower end, the 20 year is the longer end. So that's we're going to be in that range. Ultimately, once the scope is determined, we can verify that amount. In this draft, it would address district wide high priority facility repairs. And when I say that, what I mean is the task force that worked for a year and a half on the first work identified some categories of high priority repair, worked with our maintenance team to identify specifically not every facility in that category gets addressed, but the ones that have high priority needs now gets addressed. We're talking about things that are end of life or beyond end of life facilities or systems within those facilities. <coughs> we have since worked with our maintenance team, Mr. Urbano <coughs> and his leadership team, to further refine that list. The things that aren't on that list are not not important. They simply don't fit within this budget to address at this time under this option. In addition, we have ESSER 3 funding. We're in the planning process with ESSER 3 funding. That's a process that's ongoing. Ultimately, a plan is being developed that will be presented to the board for consideration on the 22nd. And that plan has to be submitted to TEA by the 27th of July. Any type of construction for air quality, typically HVAC, I shouldn't use the word typical because ESSER 3 has never happened before. We have to apply for pre-approval. No one has gotten approval yet. So an assumption that pre-approval is going to lead to approval, we certainly hope that's the case across all the work that needs to be done. We have more than $12 million in identified HVAC needs. But that's in that ballpark, it's approximate what we're looking at with ESSER 3 funds right now. <coughs> the work associated, depending on that 15 to 20 year pay schedule, in totality with the ESSER 3 funds is 49.6 to on a high end $61.4 million. Working with our internal team, our maintenance team, identified the highest of the high priority categories being HVAC systems, roofing, electrical, and plumbing. Now, those totals you see are in their entirety across all facilities that were identified in the initial facility assessment. We recognize that that total across all those categories exceeds that number. It allows for complete work within the HVAC and the roofing categories, and then some strategic determination for some campuses with various electrical and plumbing needs, but not going to meet that entirely. Draft option two, same three cent VATRE to address staff pay competitiveness and retention. That part of the plan is the same in option one and two. Proposition B, which would be a repair bond that's of a higher scale than the first option. Again, addressing district-wide priority repairs and those repair categories that were identified previously. In this proposition, it would maintain the current INS rate and utilize all available capacity currently for repairs. Again, ESSER 3 funds would be utilized right now, targeting approximately 12 million, assuming we can get approval from TEA for the work. In total, option one I don't think I mentioned results in an overall no tax increase. The total tax rate remains as it is now. In option two, because you're increasing the capacity to do the facility work in Proposition B, 
and maintaining the current rate, there is an increase to the overall tax rate, assuming the voters would approve both propositions, and the increase would be by the amount of the VATRE of three cents. So a total increase to the current tax rate of three cents. This would result in somewhere between 71 and $91 million worth of repair work. Again, depending on the length of time that we're allowed to pay that debt based on the work associated. The first four high priority repair categories that you saw on option one are, again, the first four here. And then if you add some work with safety and security across the district, windows, building envelope, gas and paving. Again, nothing new here from what was a part of the priority repairs identified. Working with our maintenance team, identifying additional categories to address. I have option one and option two. I have printouts for each of you that I'm gonna share with you so you have your own copy. And I'm gonna give you, Ashley's gonna help me. Mercedes is gonna help me. We're gonna distribute a pros and cons list. We're gonna ask you to do something that Dr. Carroll taught me years ago. It's called think, pair, and share. We're gonna ask you to, just you, as an individual first, think. Look at the two options. Think about pros and cons of each option and write them down. Please write them down legibly because at the end of the meeting, we're gonna take those up and we're gonna compile the totality of those pros and cons for each of those two options so that we can both share those out with you and ultimately share those out with our community in those meetings that we'll be holding as well. Yes, Mr. Posey. Um, on option one and option two, we have a $12 million additional funds uh, coming in. Is that 24 total or is it just the same 12? It's the same 12. So the same 12 that we have, like 44,000, 24 million at some other point in time in the last six months. So do you see that you know, those uh, funds being available? Let, let, me, let me address Mr. Posey's question. I'm going to restate it. The question was in, in regard to the ESSER funds and whether the 12 million in option one and two, first of all, was the same 12 million. And the answer is yes, it's not a 24 million total, it's 12 million. That is specific to ESSER three. I'm going to do a very quick recap. ESSER one is coming on. We didn't get any new funding from that. ESSER three came in front of ESSER two. We haven't gotten any money yet. There's a total of $28 million, but we're only allowed to apply for the first two thirds at this time, which is about $19 million. And so we're in the planning process for that. Of that total of 28 million, a minimum of 20% has to be spent on student learning loss. You can spend more, but you cannot spend less. And then we've been working with another community community uh, community committee to identify other areas that are allowable for expenses, such as staff retention, such as student support, such as air quality, and there's several other categories where we put out a community survey, they responded, then this community committee reviewed that survey, and now our team is writing a plan to use that feedback to present to the board on the 22nd. But that's specific to ESSER 3, the 28 million. There's a whole nother pot of money, but we don't know exactly how much it is. It was initially reported that it was over $12 million. We've since received information that it's going to be reduced, but we won't find out until September by what amount. And there's no information yet on how to apply for it or what it can be used for. So there is potentially additional monies coming down the road and there may be flexibilities in how those are used and potentially for facilities, but we don't know. We haven't received that information yet. So this is specific to ESSER 3. Yes, if I can pull the group back together, please. If I can get your attention, please.
So, we we'll take just a... We're going to take just a few minutes of your time, please. Time out. So, we have, we have groups at different stages. We have some who are still working on some of the pros and cons. We have some who've been finished for a little while. I want to recognize and, and appreciate each of your time. And we'll, we'll be here as long as we need to be here to have those conversations beyond the information I have to share. But I only have a little more information to share at this time, so I want to honor the time of others who are, have run the course of their conversation so they can choose to remain longer or go on with their evening. As I mentioned, we want to gather this feedback from everybody. We're going to be compiling that, pros and cons, from the task force. That'll be data that we share back out with you in totality, but also that we have to be able to share out with the community when we have our feedback meetings. So it's important that we gather that from, from everyone. In terms of next steps, we are scheduling community meetings for July 21st and 22nd. We would love to do them the week prior, but unfortunately, uh, Victoria ISD was accepted into the Holdsworth training. Not unfortunately that we were accepted into the training. Our leadership team gets millions of dollars in, in training campus and district leaders for the next several years, but that first training is the week uh, prior to this, that entire week. So we are scheduling those for July 21st and 22nd. We will compile that feedback and bring it back to this group on Monday, July 26th. So it's a Wednesday and Thursday. We'll bring that feedback back to you. You'll be able to review it and see if this group has consensus around a recommendation to bring forward to the board on the 27th of July when the board has a special call meeting. Now, we started our first meeting by saying, you may come to consensus, you may not. You're not required to come to consensus. There are some areas where it appears you have consensus, but after you receive the community feedback, it'll be up to you as a task force whether you have or can come to consensus for recommendations for the board. If not, those conversations can continue in the future. We've talked about some already that will likely continue in the future based around facility needs. <coughs> the board then has an August 5th meeting, proposed budget meeting. That's still happening. We adjust that date? No, we, we canceled August 5th, so it'll be July 27th. We, we adjusted that date. And then we have a potential August 9th or 10th. I believe we've identified August 10th for a potential date for the board to consider a VATRE or, and or bond should there be consensus for a recommendation from the task force. That deadline ultimately is the 16th. That's the last day any school board can call those types of elections for November. If there is an election call, it'll be for November 2nd. So those are next steps. I would invite and encourage the task force members to come to those community meetings so that you can hear firsthand the conversation. We'll be sharing out your feedback in those meetings and the information that you have covered. And it'd be great if you were able to hear that firsthand from our broader community. I will tell you, we will send out information. We're still finalizing the location, but we'll send that out shortly to you. I will tell you that when we did a tremendous amount of work last year and held community meetings, we were just coming out of COVID that may have significantly limited people's willingness to come to meetings in person, but we had very low community attendance at these meetings where the prior bond plan was being shared. And so I would ask you as members of the task force, people connected in the community, to please encourage people you know to come out and learn more. The only way we can bring you quality feedback is to have people give us feedback. Ms. Keelan? So I, I don't uh, disagree, but I'm just wondering um, if the community knew that these meetings, if I'm understanding correctly, 
correctly. Our feedback from the community is to shape the institutional bond or BAT election, as opposed to being asked to come learn about something that has already been decided, maybe we'll get a better turn. I think that's... So, so this is what we're asking for, is what do they want to see on the ballot, not telling them what this is. And I expect that that's the type of messaging that will be coming forward from the district and also encourage you to share that same type of messaging that we're, we're wanting to share information but get feedback to drive your decision making as a task force. And Greg and I started talking a little bit about what that might look like even today. And, and, and the design of the evening will be created and such to get that very information from our community. It, it will feel very much like they have ownership in the process of what eventually comes forward, if anything. Is it just an option one and option two, or are the other things that the task force has been trying to work on? Asking the community what they want. We would only bring forward to the community things that there was a strong level of consensus among the task force. If we can't have consensus in this small group, we don't feel it's reasonable to expect consensus from the broad community. That is the information that we wanted to share and gather from you tonight. If you would like to stay and talk further and have questions, please do so. I will remain here. We've got some board members here. It's up to Mr. Mercer when he adjourns the meeting. But, uh, but also, if you've got other plans, uh, we thank you for your time tonight and would uh, invite you to, to make the choice on what you want to do next. Did you have a question, Matt? No, sorry. I don't know. Why don't you go ahead and let Mike end the meeting? Let me make sure we get that. All right, Mike, do you mind adjourning the meeting? This meeting is adjourned. <laughs> This meeting is now open. Okay, so I feel like if we bring unanswered questions that we can't even answer ourselves, we are starting over in fact gathering with those guys. When we, when we take new information back from those guys, we're, we're starting over as far as fact gathering, and then we've got to start all over with our planning that we've already done these first two steps of, and we don't have the time to start all over and do that again. And we don't, and the run, like they said, the, the it has not been decided even amongst us what the it can be. So then we gotta go back and do the it then. And then you don't have the money to, we don't have the monies allocated, or we don't know what the monies can be allocated for the it. So I disagree with moving, opening up the floor to stuff that we have not agreed on to ourselves, within ourselves. And, and, and that's where, and that's where Greg and I are coming into this meeting. Because we've got, to, we've got to stand in front of the community and say either this was the consensus of the task force or it's just the Clinton and Greg show. And, and I'm not a fan of that. I'm, I'm not a fan of coming forward to the community and saying this is the plan and this is what we're going to do. When I don't have confidence that it represents it's going to have, we're going to have three bonds. If you get the, when you put this bond out there with zero tax, that's going to pass. And you're going to ask for the other part. You're going to have a little tax there. You're going to have three bond payments going on while you're asking for a fourth one. In the, I mean, because you, you're going to have to ask for another one within a few years to keep up to do something with Stroman. You're going to have to ask for another one. So then you're going to have four, you're going to have those, and you're going to have to ask for another one. And people are like, man, that's a, you know, we haven't paid when we're we paying this one off before we we already got another one. We got another one. I mean, I don't know if that's a common thing for that's all what, that's my staff. question. What's the realistic so, there so I, it, it, in our size comparison? I, I guess when I hear that, what I'm thinking is about your level of debt and your ratio of debt. And we shared data early on that we are a very low debt carrying school district in comparison to the vast majority of school districts. We're at about one fourth of the debt of school districts our size. We have a few bonds that are in the payment process, but as a totality of our debt, we don't carry much debt in DISD compared to other school districts. So it, it's, it's like having three cars that all cost $1,000 debt payments or, or one that cost 100 thousand dollars you know it's it's about the totality of what you owe in terms of debt payments you know, I, at least the reason I came here is to see what the room says and then compare it to what we think the public will go for okay or, or to not if, if we don't uh, use the sentiment of the public and just propose things that we know the last 
Vaughn, why did it fail? In my opinion, it failed because Stroman. Everybody hit Stroman and then the playgrounds. Those are the two, when I go around town and talk every day to people, I specifically ask them, and that's what they say. I think, I think you're absolutely right. I think one and two would pass, and I think, I think Mission Valley would pass. I think there's sentiment in the community to make that pass, and that's, that would go. I, I truly believe that. There's such strong oppositions to those other two factors in the bond last time. That's eliminated. There you go. And you already have the figures for the last go around, right? And you know it. You know what's going to be needed at a mission about. I don't know. To the, to the point, though, if, you, if everyone in the room agrees to rebuild Stroman, that that's the best option, then I don't think you'd have any, any disagreement with Greg and I to take that board to the community. We're happy to do that. But I need to have confidence that there's consensus in the room that that is the best option is to rebuild Stroman. And if but if, there, if there's not consensus around that, then, then, then we're not representing the voice of the tax board because there isn't consensus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was just wondering as I've been listening to what everyone has said. The only thing that I see that is really a lot of this thing is let's get Strowman off of the thing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what 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 are you gonna do with these twelve hundred kids that's gonna be going to that school? Okay, Mission Valley gets a new school. Strowman's in dire need of a new school. But we're wiping it off so we can get the others done. Okay. So once we get the others done, what are we going to do about Strowman? We're going to talk about it, but we're never going to do anything. How come we're not going to do anything? That's my question. I can answer that. Because the people over in the South don't vote. And they're only concerned about who's voting. Not concerned about the schools and the people that are in those schools. Hopkins? Dudley? Nobody's talking about what we're going to do with the other schools. Well, I think we have stepped in if, uh, if we're just going to look at one portion and, and, and not look at the overall thing. You may not be able to do them all at one time, but you still should be looking at them. Because even as, as you improve them, as you redo them, you, you need to keep up. The problem is you get behind, and it costs too much to catch up. So we, 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 got, we have to come up with a new way of doing it than what we're doing right now. And I think this room ought to look at compassion. And when I say compassion, I look at every school. Because every school is represented by families. And when we look at families, we look at everyone. So let's have compassion when we're making the decisions. Not how many votes are coming from that. Um, I just wonder if a way forward for the community conversations at least is to go back to kind of our chart activity and to offer those three options to the community and say our task force was able to reach consensus that one and two are pretty good plans. We're not sure which one is the one yet. And we'd still like to hear from the community about option three, which I'll like this more a la carte menu option as a community. And if they are like, no, you know, we hate those or whatever, but at least it provides the greater community a chance to get feedback about Stroman as a replacement, Mission Valley as a replacement, and in that option three a la carte, we're not saying renovate, we're saying, you know, new build yeah. or not. New build or not build. And at least we're getting feedback, you know, and, and it's not necessarily saying, um, when we come back to this room, we'll be able to say, all right, here's the community feedback, are we gonna move, which one are we gonna move forward, right? That's what July 26 is for anyways, and so at least we're able to hear from the people outside this room, because that's what I think I really struggled with being part of the last task force is like, gosh, I wish that person's voice was in the room, and, and it's on me to be the one that represents them, right? And so if we're able to get those folks to the meeting and hear, you know, kind of about, about back to our chart activity, is there really a third that would prefer the a la carte option? What's the harm in doing a la carte? Because then people still get to say yes or no at voting day, right? It's not saying, it's not all in one bucket. So. 
I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit. I might not have to try it. In theory, we could take those three options to the community and get feedback on all three of them. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, super deliberate. And I think it's going to change how we wanted to do the community forum because we're going to have to be super deliberate about exactly what is said to our community. The last thing I want to do is say something to our community that's not true. Like a la carte, if you don't know where you're going to end up. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly my point. And so I think we, Greg and I, are going to have to be to the point of almost strictly deliberate about how we present this to the community for feedback that we could then bring back to you. And if the broad consensus from the community meetings is they want to pursue option three, then we have a very, very difficult decision. And this is going to be your thinking homework for the next three weeks. We have a very difficult decision to make because what we do not have, and we've said this several times, but I'm going to say it again, we do not have the runway to go back to the beginning and start from scratch. We are going to have to make a decision of can you live with a recommendation to rebuild your campuses if that's what the community says that they want? Or can you not live with it? Because ultimately, this is the group that has the essentially final say before we plan to take something. Now, I don't want anybody to influence somebody else's thinking. That's part of why we give homework. It's, <laughs> so please, please. I know you, some of you instantly have a comment and an opinion on this, but please keep it to yourself. I want for you to think. I really want for you to think. We all need to be thinking. That's the best use of our time. I have a question, but not, it's not a comment. Are you going to put forth in the Stroman proposal and the Mission Valley proposal the um, major repairs or the major renovation or are you going to do just the re the rebuild or the um you see what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll try to structure that part of the conversation in such a way that it says we could look at a total rebuild right new build, build rebuild new build new build yeah. remodel renovation yeah but we don't have a renovation cost for mission yeah. valley no. so that's you, there's no way you're going to get that oh uh, we don't yeah have. We just had up for But then it's Stroman then. But I'm just asking. Stroman would have a. Yeah, yeah, Mission Valley and Campbell. Stroman would go. Stroman, we could say new build, renovation, or nothing. What are your thoughts and comments as we talk to them? Because Mission Valley would be build or not build. Build or not. Because we had a lot of discussion on this on Stroman on the three levels. Yeah. yeah. We did. We had a lot of discussion on all three levels. So I think if you're going to present it, that is indicative of our thought process in here was at three levels. And, and I, I just want to clarify because we didn't dig deep into this today specific to Stroman on option one and two. But what we looked at in working with our maintenance team was there was about $26 million worth of identified repairs if you look at it in its totality. We had the conversation of if this task force, if the district is thinking we're going to do some repairs now, but this is, needs to be a continued conversation about a potential addressing that building in a more significant way in the not too distant future. What do we need to do right now? Not the complete 26 million. What are the things we need to do to get them through the next few years? It's a very similar conversation to what the initial task force had about Shield Elementary. If you remember, Shield was identified for rebuild in five years by the first task force. And so we had a modified, reduced scope of repairs specifically just for shields because we didn't want to go to our community and say, well, we identified about $5 million worth of repairs, but we also plan to build it new for about $50 million in five years. So we're going to do this modified because there are some things that just have to be done. To use the word of the task force member, limp a campus along until we can build new construction. And so we would have to have that same conversation about, and we've, we've been having that internal conversation about what are the absolute needs for specifically Stroman, because it's so much different than Mission Valley. A question that was, that was asked last Monday, and it's very important point if you were prepared to answer it. If we can't come up with a consensus, and if we don't have a bond on, the, on November, what happens to BISD facilities if we don't have the money? 
We don't have a construction bond. We don't have a construction bond. What happens? <coughs> well, I will tell you in our conversations, and Johnny has a very thoughtful, deliberate team. They've been working for years to patch, fix, do everything they can, raw parts for several of these systems that are a part of this bond. And the, the true answer is, well, we, we don't know how long that'll last. We know it's past its identified useful life. We know that it's lived longer than it was expected to live. We know that although we hear sometimes that our staff isn't working hard to take care of what we have, they've made things last years, sometimes decades, longer than they were supposed to. And so the question, the answer is we don't know. You know, we could have an issue, or it could make it a couple more years. And, and the other answer to that question is we actually do have an option from this task force that there is broad consensus on, and that's that zero tax option. And we all know that, that if there's no tax increase, there is consensus around pay teachers and do the, the bare, 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 bare bone minimum. Is, do, do any of us in the room love it? No, of course not. Except for the you know tax increase, of course, everybody loves that. But it doesn't allow us to get where we need to go. So we're struggling with those other three, but I, I think that still would be a lot But for the community meetings, you're gonna need that. I, I think it would be very beneficial to, to everyone that you tell them that if we don't do this or this, this is what we're looking at. Because, I, I mean, Absolutely. As sad as, 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 as proud as I am to say, I went to Stroman. It's sad to go over there and look at it, and I, I, that, I wish you'd have the meeting there. <laughs> tr tr truthfully, though, truthfully, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean in just a little bit on what you just said. I think when Greg and I say it, we have, we have about that much impact on people. When you say it, it makes all the difference in the world. So, so truly, like if we actually want to get something done in this community, it's going to take every one of you going and bringing at least 10 to 20 people to those community meetings and telling them why it's so damn important that they're there. Because if we don't get that, and if we don't have you supporting it, then it's Greg and I, and we've already done that. We know how that turns out. It turns out by the second, at the second community forum, one person can Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but he had me there for an hour and a half. <laughs> And in, in my opinion, and it's my opinion, when we consolidated, when the district consolidated, that's, in my opinion, the only reason you got two new high schools, two new uh, elementary schools, a, a middle school, and a, a fine arts center that could be used by everyone, and the natato is a natatorium. Yeah. Yes. I believe that with all my heart because, like you said, what did you say? We have an emotional, long, long emotional. emotional. But I'm telling you, way back when, I graduated in 76, Victoria High School. Woo, woo, go stingerees. But it was the country kids and the city kids. Country kid, Stroman, right? City kid. I'm just, um, Dr. Carroll, what were you, Dr. Carroll? <laughs> I'm just saying, that, that to me is why we got the high schools. Because they were we gonna, wanted that back. Yeah, we, we wanted lost. that back, and that's just Victoria. But I'm telling you, when I was at West, I mean, Daniel Alvarado, what does he have? The Stroman S on his uniforms for Victoria West. I mean, you know, just, I'm just saying. That, I mean, that's just my opinion. So we gotta have something like that where they'll buy in. I got you. Can I just comment on that, having served on the board during part of the decade? Service to most of the children that went to the high school. Um, because the only resources, I agree with you, that is what made the urgent run for the community to act. And that's all I'm speaking about. And so I think what I'm wondering is, and so the question is, is do you feel like we have urgency today? No, the community no, doesn't. No, I mean, the community does not. No, no um, emergency. And, and if they don't, why not? Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything. Everybody messes with my kids. Well, that's the mentality. <laughs> Which I don't have kids in school, but I mean, that's the mentality. And when we, when, when the school system messed with everybody's kids and where they were going, all of a sudden there was a sense of urgency. Exactly. But then, I mean, that's a reactive thing. Exactly. exactly. And, 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 
Absolutely. I think absolutely. So, I think it only took about six months. I'm just saying, in terms of in terms of an efficient in terms of an efficient way to to problem solve, it's really not particularly efficient. No, but if the threat of we might have to close this campus and move these kids to this campus. It's not, I mean, it's not. Well, all of a sudden, you're going to get someone. Fair enough. It's scary. Fair enough. It's scary. It's fair enough. When we give the presentation, we will make a compelling case for why these campuses need a hard look and ask for the community to take that into consideration. If they're giving us, if they're giving us feedback, both Greg and I are former high school coaches. I, I hear you all. Fear is a better motivator than desire. We all know that when it comes to motivating high school athletes, we will try to use that mentality in preparing our preparing our remarks. And, and it's not, and you're not lying. I mean, because if we don't do something with Strowman, you will eventually have to move some. You will have to do something. And I'll just add here to say short term. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and perhaps you can hear I'm still scared by high school. And speaking of speaking of this is a nice one. Speaking of historical memory, uh, perhaps it worked 20 years ago, and perhaps we've had enough time for it to work again. Uh, I quizzed Johnny this morning, speaking of long term memory, on what tell me when the new building was built. I remember the turned 56. Yeah. Right? You said 65? 65, yes, 65. Okay. Turned 56. Mm -hmm. Now, the community still calls it 56. Well, what's the yeah. Yeah. We have a, No, here. Uh, here. Uh, here, this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Building B. And it's right here. Right. Right. Yeah. You're right. yeah. 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 not using the new building? Very good. I want to apologize, guys. I was supposed to come in and be quiet. No, 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 I, well, I, 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 I apologize to administration too, and, and, uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I apologize. And, and also, I wanted to state when we talk about um, getting feedback from the community, uh, I get calls from people who barely speak. They're afraid to talk to me on the phone about the conditions of their grandchildren. And for us to expect them to pretend to be, to represent how they really feel, you won't actually see it. But I wish this group would take those boys in consideration. They won't change. They won't don't know how to articulate it. They're afraid to come in contact with us. They're afraid to be at a meeting. And many of them are working two jobs they can't get to. And so when we come back and expect, well, we didn't get the feedback. It's not because they don't care. And I think that needs to be said. Okay. I think we have our marching order. I'm only adjourning this thing one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already on overtime. So. Oh, 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 no, no. One more, one more. So, what you said was we did, in the first line of that course, we did go over Hopkins, Shields, Smith, and Bay Roller, and so on. We know all six of those schools need to be rebuilt. But we can't afford that. <laughs> But, yes, we, I understand. Yes, we want to do it. Yeah. Before Mike adjourns, I did predict how the meeting would end. So I need to make sure my prediction comes true with gratitude <laughs> for you. <laughs> for your efforts tonight. For the final time, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.